What's up, everybody? It's a beautiful weekend morning. It's time to make some noise with 10 millimeter. Ruger LC carbine gets to come out again. This time we have a very special ammunition for you. You've already seen it from the title and thumbnail, but today we have 10 millimeter Black Talon. So the Winchester Black Talon had a pretty good run. However, it was a very short run in the early 90s. It was just too scary for everybody. They had to get rid of this evil black looking Talon looking projectile, at least the way it was loaded up. Trust me, we have modern variations of it, but they just had to get rid of this totally scary look. This is a good looking 10 millimeter cartridge. It has a sealed primer, a nickel case, and then the very scary black Talon projectile, which is actually a 200 grain SXT. So remember that when you're seeing other ammunition labeled SXT, that would be the exact same thing pretty much. So as they were phasing out the Black Talon, they were bringing online SXT for sure. They were selling it as law enforcement type of ammunition in certain cartridges, but anybody could get their hands on it. Another one that performs very closely to it would be Platinum Tip. So usually pretty hard to come by, not impossible, but very pricey when you do find it. It's pretty much a collector's item now, but we will go ahead and shoot it because it's the original setup that they had it in. A lot of people like to see how it performs. We're gonna try it out of our five inch 1911 Delta Elite first, and that'll give us a baseline as to how it performs out of a pistol. Then we're gonna go ahead and kick it up a notch with a 16 inch barrel in the Ruger LC carbine in 10 millimeter, of course. Now being a 200 grain projectile, I don't know if it's gonna improve it too much. It all depends on what kind of powder they have loaded in there, if that powder would be more efficient in a longer barrel. We're noticing with this carbine with the 16 inch barrel, which is unique from things like the Banshee that tend to have a very short barrel compared to this. We're noticing that the heavier projectiles don't seem to benefit as much from the added barrel length. The very light stuff very much benefits from the added barrel length, at least with the projectiles and cartridges that we've tried loaded with the powders that they're loaded with. We're gonna check velocity at the muzzle with a Garmin chronograph, hopefully, as long as it behaves, and we will attempt to get impact velocity from the Caldwell. So testing explained, let's get to shooting this stuff. All right, one black talon loaded up for a five inch 1911. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna aim pretty much low. Well, I'm gonna aim top left on the block. Good shot, a little bit of smoke came out of the block. We have 937 on the Caldwell. We have 927 on the Garmin. So they're getting along pretty well. All right, we have good shot placement. We have terrible sunlight to deal with right now, but good shot placement in that block. All right, starting out at the very beginning, we don't have too impressive of a wound channel, but it is a wound channel. It's what you see out of a jacket at hollow point. It does its typical early on expansion situation, the most disruption there in the beginning, I would say nine inches, and then it goes down to a piercing wound cavity like they almost always do. This one in particular is facing backwards. Hopefully I can get a good focus on that. It definitely did its talon back, pedal back thing that the black talons are famous for doing. It's going to look really cool when we get it out of there. I'm going to be generous and say it's settled at 14 and three quarter. It has a bounce back from probably about 16 and a quarter. If I line it up right, you can see right there, the bullets always bounce back a little bit. Sometimes you don't see that. It doesn't leave a permanent mark, but sometimes they can go all the way up here and then bounce back pretty good. So take that into consideration. It is gel. It is bouncy. Let's look at it from a different angle. This is looking at it from kind of a slanted angle at the top. You can see the good disruption there. It does have disruption. It's just not super massive, but it's a 200 grain projectile. It's not moving entirely too fast. And it's kind of made to just do its thing early, but stay intact and stay pretty nasty as it goes through. Obviously it does some sort of a tumble in there somewhere because it is backwards. Looking at it from this side, the wound track looks a little better to us because it's closer to this edge of the block. I flipped it around. So there we go. We see it landing right there. It is pretty mangled. It is pretty gnarled. It didn't get super deep on us though. And like I said, not a huge disruption. So you can't say that this really stands out from the crowd too much from a lot of other ammunitions that we've tried recently. But keep in mind also, we did not achieve super velocity with this. This is a 200 grain projectile. Most people understand that 1200 feet per second would be pretty much the norm for a 200 grain projectile out of a 10 millimeter. You can get away with 1150. Some companies have done well with that, but a thousand, that's, you know, giving it 
<laughs> that's just not giving it much of a chance. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to expect a super huge velocity increase out of this barrel, but I would like to see at least close to 1,200. 1,100 maybe. Can we get at least 100 more feet per second? Hopefully. All right, we got one loaded up in the LC carbine. We have 927.7 on that previous velocity. Let's see if we can beat that. I have a slight holdover, so hopefully I hit it properly. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good hit. That's a nice spot. We got 1039 downrange, and we have 1035 here. So they're getting along, they're agreeing, but that's not any kind of increase that we were really liking. And yep, this stupid thing just bit me on the cheek again. I have to put a piece of tape on that. I really hate that. Just so you guys know, this is a very sharp part here. I need to go ahead and sand it down, put a piece of grip tape or something over it because it's annoying. It will bite you on the cheek. It'll actually cut you. And there we go. I'd say we have definitely a good shot placement right there. That will be easy to look at. And yeah, just a little bit of increase in velocity did change things around with this for sure. We have the same kind of normal entrance wound there. It does settle down a little bit later, probably at about nine and a half inches, at least from this angle. It's hard to tell because they just twist and turn. But we definitely did not settle as deep. You can see that we're laying pretty much exactly at 13 inches. It looks like that bullet's a little bit more mangled, but we'll have to get it out to check for sure. We have a bounce back from, I'd say, right right before 15 inches, 14 and three quarter. I'll go ahead and get a little closer so you can see that. Focus in on those projectiles. So as with the case, a lot of times the increased barrel length or the increased velocity just tends to make that bullet mushroom out a little bit more quickly, a little bit more wide. So it tends to put the brakes on a little bit faster. Sometimes you can get increased disruption in the very beginning, but you're going to suffer in the end when it comes to penetration. However, I think that kind of balances itself out. With more velocity, you do get more foot pounds of energy dumping into the beginning part, and you do have the bigger wound channel sometimes or usually, even though you don't get as much penetration. Now, some people really, they want the penetration. They want to get to proper depth just in case they have to have odd shots. So if that's something to you, then you have to consider that when you're using increased barrel lengths for increased velocity. Let's take a look from a different angle. So camera guy does report that on slow motion, it does appear to have a little bit more impact on the gel. Looking down here from a different angle, we can see where they stop short or the one stop short of the other for sure. You see the flag above us because we have a canopy to try to block out the sun. But let's go ahead and flip this around from the other side and see what that looks like. So the sun's gonna be a little funny today. We will have some odd reflections, but you'll get the gist of it right there. Same thing you were seeing from the other side, pretty much almost identical entrance wound maybe a little bit more disruption right there you can see it's just a little bit fatter at that point right there definitely jiggled the block a little bit more falls short of the other one but definitely opened up it's going to be a pretty nasty projectile when we get it out of there i would say that that is sufficient depth for most applications and it's very shootable out of the pistol and out of the rifle so i'd say it's an easy ammunition to handle for most people it doesn't have a whole lot of velocity therefore not a lot of bang and a lot of boom but it will get the job done in my opinion. It's just not super stout 10 millimeter. All right, so here's the one out of the pistol and here is the one out of the carbine. You can definitely see the carbine has mushroomed back more. It pushed more of that lead back. This one has a little bit of a cavity still left in it. Looking at it from its side, here's where you can see those infamous talons. And let me tell you, they are sharp. When you pull these things out of the gel block, these things are like little needles going into your fingers if you're not careful. But you can see the just slight increase in velocity went ahead and pushed these pedals back farther. They tucked themselves in a little bit tighter. They definitely have more frontal area here, in my opinion. We'll get the caliper on it in a second, but that's what puts the brakes on things. They have an exposed lead base, and again, you can see the evidence of what happens when you increase the velocity. You tuck those pedals back a little bit more, a little farther, and actually, we were starting to separate out the jacket from the core. But man, look at those talons. Those things really are mean. This is what it started out like, and this is what it ended up like. Super, super sharp, super cool looking. I wish they didn't discontinue them. It's pretty ridiculous. But like I said, you can find them in other loadings that are very similar, if not the exact same thing. On the scale, the one from the pistol comes in at 199.9. So I'd say that's pretty good weight retention there. The one from the rifle, after we get to zero it out for a second, is 199.8. 
200. So there we go. Close enough. There's a little bit of wind out here and that's messing with things. Let's measure them. Now the best measurement I can give you with the copper pedals is 0.739. And the best measurement I can give you with just the lead, not including the pedals, would be 0.644. That was the pistol, but the one that came out of the carbine, the best I can give you is 0 0.702 inches. I'm not going to go ahead and measure the copper because it's peeled back. It's too tight to even measure. It won't make a difference. But other measurements you can pull out of it would be, let's see if I can get it, 0 0.689. There's the 0 0.703. And that's good enough. Well, there you go. We got the information for you. Let us know what you think in the comments about Black Talon, Black Talon out of this carbine, this carbine, any of this stuff. It is pretty interesting how it didn't take a whole lot more velocity to go ahead and change things around pretty significantly. And for those of you that know the channel, know that we're not done testing this Black Talon. We will definitely be messing around with it. We will put these 40 caliber projectiles to use. We will put them to extreme speed. I would say there's a good possibility that we'll add this to the ammo test series we're doing for 10 millimeter. We'll probably put them through the 3.8 inch Springfield and the Colt Delta Elite for accuracy and independent gel testing aside from the carbine. So stay tuned for that if you wanna see that. I'm pretty sure we're gonna do that. I just have to think about it because we have other projects that we wanna do with some of these projectiles. Hope you've been enjoying our 10 millimeter carbine videos. Stay tuned, we have really cool stuff. We've actually taken a couple of viewer requests for certain types of ammunition Hint, hint, Underwood Extreme Defender 100 grain. That'll be the next one you see out of this carbine. So stay tuned for that. Make sure your notifications on and make sure you're subscribed. Thank you for watching this video. And until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting. Definitely 10 millimeter, maybe out of a carbine.